Hello, folks. Welcome back to Chris White Africa. This is Chris. Well, four years of uncertainty, undermining investment, frightening off foreign direct investment, depressing land values, and making farms unsellable finally comes to an end with a whimper. What started as an effort by the African National Congress to arrest its decline in popular support and a means for them to steal from South Africans after they drained every other source of money and resources from the economy has ended on a quiet note. On December 7th, 2021, the South African National Assembly, this 400 seat body, legislative body, tabled and had a vote on expropriation without compensation. Now, a lot of people in South Africa have been concerned about this piece of legislation because they think it's targeting South African farmland. Well, that's part of it, but that's only part of the story. Read this amendment to Section 25 of South Africa's Constitution. You'll quickly discover that it's about property. Property includes everything you own, folks, from your stocks and your checking accounts to your buckies and your SUVs, your jewelry. Any valuables you have could be confiscated by the state legally under this amendment. Fortunately, it has died a death finally. But this isn't the end of it. You should hear the nonsense that's taking place from members of parliament, the things they're saying to get people cited about this or to disregard this. Well, South Africa's National Assembly has 400 seats. In order to pass this amendment to the Constitution, two-thirds majority was needed, 267 seats. The vote on the 7th of December 2021 was 204 members of parliament in favor of expropriation without compensation, 145 members opposed. So that's 349 members of parliament. There were no abstentions. So where were the other 51 members of parliament? Why weren't they present? And why didn't they vote? 51 members, over 10% of the parliament didn't vote and wasn't there. What's that all about? But this has always been about the ANC slowing down and stopping its unpopularity. Well, it's not working. This party is wildly unpopular. In the recent municipal elections took place on the 1st of November, 2021, the African National Congress secured just 13% of the eligible voters, 39 million eligible voters in South Africa, just 5.4 million South Africans bothered to go to a poll and pull the lever for candidates for the African National Congress. That's not a sad showing. That's an abysmal showing. Absolutely horrific performance by the ANC. But opposition parties didn't do particularly well either, as people have lost interest in South African politics as the country collapses around them. But make no mistake, folks, this was not simply about farmland. That's part of it. It was about taking property. That's what it was always about. I've argued for a long time that South Africa should not even be eligible for the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, giving them duty-free access to the United States, because a key component of AGOA is respect for the rule of law and protection of property rights. This amendment to the Constitution was intended to undermine property rights, and that's the bottom line. That such an abominable bill was ever on the floor of the parliament is a disgrace to the rule of law. And for the 204 members of South Africa's parliament, most of whom were likely African National Congress members, probably uh, folks from other small parties who align with them, you're a disgrace. Shame on you. You voted to steal from law-abiding citizens. And don't give me this nonsense about your land was stolen. Hey, listen, Byzantine Empire was stolen from my ancestors. You don't see us whining about it. The Hagia Sophia is occupied and turned into a mosque. You don't see Christianity freaking out about that, do you? All of North Africa was a Christian realm. It's largely Muslim today. No one's losing sleep over that. Pomeranian and Silesia were German territory for over a thousand years, as was East Prussia, and ethnic Germans lived throughout Eastern Europe. They no longer do. You don't see anybody crying about the theft of their land. Get over it. Get over it. And those thefts were far more recently than the nine wars that the Kosovo fought against Trek Boers and the wars that Basutu fought against the Trek Boers. As far as comments on the bill in Parliament, this is what came out during the debate. African National Congress member of Parliament, Matole Mocheka, who chaired the ad hoc committee that drafted this abomination, said that the House had an opportunity uh, by adopting this bill and changing the Constitution to eradicate the original sin in the interest of all South Africans. What exactly is this original sin? He said the bill sought to address the crime against African humanity. Those who are not supporting this bill are saying that the suffering of African people in particular and black people in general should continue until sometime in the future when they are in power, something that will never happen. I'm sorry, did I miss something? Is the African National Congress not a party comprised overwhelmingly of black South Africans? There are very few whites and Indians and colors left in the party. Most of them have left the party. Only a handful of them there, token whites, token coloreds, token Indians. So 
it's already black people running the country for 27 years. What are you talking about sometime in the future when they're in power? Who are you talking about? What are you talking about? Total lunacy here. Idiocy. For his part, the rabble rousing member of the Economic Freedom Fighters, the disgraced former leader of the African National Congress Youth League, Julius Malema, or Juju, said, we call on South Africans to know that it is now in their hands. They must stop trusting that the ANC can do anything in its power to give them the land back. They must take it upon themselves to reclaim that which was stolen from them. And the EFF will be fully behind them when they engage in that struggle of taking back the land that was stolen from them by children of criminals. Wow. Well, first off, racist much, Julius? Race hustling? Vile, despicable language from this shameful member of South Africa's parliament. Julius Malema is inciting violence here. Why isn't he being charged with a crime? Why can he get away with inciting violence and racial hatred? There's actually laws in South Africa against saying these sorts of things about people, but he gets away with it. Now, he's talking that South Africans and saying they should take back the land, they should occupy, they should steal land from people, that that's legitimate. He's a member of the legislature responsible for drafting laws and ensuring that the rule of law is followed. Yet he's calling for lawlessness, but that's Julius Malema. Earlier this year, he said the EFA would never support an amendment that did not place all land in state custodianship. So the problem with this bill to, to change the constitution wasn't that it wouldn't expropriate property and land. It's that it wouldn't steal land from people and then retain it in the hands of the political elite so they could use it to their benefit and advantage like they've done in Zimbabwe. Now, it's not about returning land to black South Africans, those who actually have land taken from them. But virtually nobody alive today has not resolved that issue. For their part, the Nkata Freedom Party's chief whip, Naran Singh, he said that he pointed out the government's lack of implementation and its corruption, and he's spot on. Some government officials are stuffing their pockets while hardworking black farmers are waiting, said Singh, adding that the Constitution's 18th Amendment bill process has all been a political game at the cost of the people of South Africa. And he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. What has happened here is that the South African government has been woefully underfunded when it comes to land reform, to land acquisition, to land redistribution. The ANC has failed to provide uh, services. It's failed to provide credit, failed to provide education and training. It's failed to provide fertilizer seed or farm equipment implements, anything. It's simply on the rare occasions it transfers land to black South Africans. It simply leaves them to their own devices. And of course, most of these farmers fail without support. Now, the dirty little secret the ANC and the EFF, these race hustlers, don't want to tell people is that a fair number of small-scale commercial black farmers have gotten assistance and help from their neighboring white commercial farmers who've helped them out so they could succeed. But that story is ignored because it doesn't fit the racial hatred narrative that the ANC and in particular the EFF want to feed people. But folks, today, this bill was defeated, long overdue for defeat. And there you have it. Uh, but it's not over. You see Julius Malema inciting violence, telling people to steal land, uh, violating the law. And once again, he won't be in the docket for his crimes. He'll get away with it. Uh, this does not bode well for South Africa's future. And also it encourages continued invasion of farms and farm murders of farmers, their family members, and their farm managers and workers. Folks, if you're not a subscriber to Chris White Africa, why don't you come on smash that button right down there. Appreciate your support. Keep you updated on what's happening around Africa and especially in South Africa. Cheers, everybody. Take care.